Today on The Real Story, the governor and Democratic leaders are moving forward with their plan for tolling trucks only on Connecticut highways. But not all rank and file Democrats are on their side. First up today, Simsbury Representative John Hampton. He's against tolls. And then the governor is adamant that the state would be on sound legal ground if tolls on trucks only were to be challenged in court. But what does Quinnipiac University law professor Bill Dunlap have to say about that? We'll also get his take on the impeachment drama playing out in Congress. It's all today on The Real Story. Hi there, you're watching The Real Story. I'm Al Terzi alongside Jen Bernstein. Thank you, Al, and good morning to everyone at home. State lawmakers will be going into special session this week, but not to vote on Governor Lamont's latest plan to toll trucks only. In fact, this week they're going to be voting on the settlement of a legal battle with hospitals and the resolution of the conflict over how restaurant workers should be paid. Now, why the delay in taking up tolls? Not enough support yet, even among Democrats, it appears. Our first guest this morning, one Democrat opposed to tolls, Simsbury Representative John Hampton. Thank Good, you. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, Good morning thank you so you. much for having me back. It's well, uh, it's a pleasure having you anytime we can get you. Thank you so much. I know you're a busy guy, but it, <laughs> especially being a Democrat and being against tolls, you're not with the program. Uh, oh, do I need to get with the program? <laughs> Independent well, thinker. Independent thinker. Yes. Uh, that's what people would expect, I right. suppose. You I know? mean, most people do. So tell me, when you were campaigning, did you get constituents talking about tolls a lot in, in Simsbury? Um, not at the time, but I think the talk was mostly folks' frustration with our government's ability to uh, maintain uh, decreased spending and taxes um, is always a big issue. And when will Connecticut finally um, get its fiscal house in order? So, um, but I have been getting a lot of emails as of late on tolls. And a lot of the, the common theme is lack of trust. Um, it's not necessarily the tolls, but th that's a big part of it. But they don't trust that the money's going to go into, you know, we've already raided the fund. And this is how many different plans now. And the governor promised one plan. And um, I think we're on the fourth or fifth plan. And um, so I think people are frustrated and they've had enough and they see it as one more tax, which I do. Um, and I think we should call a special session to address the elephant in the room, which is our $36 million deficit Kevin Lembo just unveiled last week, hmm. which is very alarming. What happened to the surplus? We, no we, more surplus. We just not no, so no long ago, surplus. was it? Kevin Lembo just unveiled yes, last week. Yes, you know. So um, it didn't come as, up as much in the campaign, but more and more uh, my constituents uh, are opposed and concerned of, about our overall fiscal picture. What about the Republicans who uh, are against tolls uh, and they think if we're going to uh, need to finance this uh, repair work that needs to be done on the bridges and highways and so on, uh, we should just uh, borrow it or take and take it out of the rainy day fund? I don't think we should be borrowing more. We've always had a borrowing problem and thankfully we put a, uh, a cap with a lot of support from folks like me on our on our borrowing. Um, I think our residents, our constituents want us to focus on really um, auditing our state government, looking for more efficiencies, not adding new programs. For example, last year I, I loved the idea of paid family medical leave, but we couldn't afford it. And we constantly keep adding to the burden on the taxpayer for programs we can't afford. We need like a five-year break where we just regroup and focus on the programs that we have. Well, um, we've got all these uh, pr problems that exist right now and need attention now. So, yes, so. Uh, I would look at um, pension reform moving forward. We haven't talked about that. We haven't talked about the overtime issue um, that still exists. But I mean on the highways, the bridges that are the falling apart or in danger of falling apart and people getting hurt, killed. I mean, it's if something's got to be done now, so how do we pay for it? I think we look for efficiencies and savings elsewhere um, and really do the hard, I think that's the harder work. I think tolls are, are easy um, for folks to, 
to just throw out there. And again, it's yet another focus on revenue and not spending. We, we still have a spending problem. Republicans and Democrats have been wanting to find this extra revenue source because they want to be able to take advantage of the low-cost federal loans that are available. Uh, so when you're looking at that, are you saying, we don't need those right now, we really just need to focus on the efficiencies within government? Correct. So and you're looking at the dangling carrot and you're like, this is a distraction. For Correct. And uh, again, I, I share my constituents' concerns and the, the trust that the money will actually stay um, where it's supposed to in a transportation fund. We already took money out of it. Um, so, um, How many more people like you in the Democrat ranks, do you, would you say? Um, well, we still have a, a moderate caucus. We haven't caucused tolls in a while. Um, the last time we caucused was probably about a month ago, and it was a different plan at the time. Mm -hmm. We haven't caucused um, this new version. Um, we're the going trucks to, only. Now, what's correct. wrong with trucks only? The, the, well, we're the not governor sure. says these are the ones that are causing all the damage. They're the big, heavy trucks coming through and rolling across our yeah. roads. Shouldn't they pay? Well, a couple things. Um, that will increase our, our taxes because t trucks bring in products and, and things that we use. So that's, and if they have to pay more, we're going to we'll end pay up more. paying more. And the, uh, I think you're going to talk about it more later, about the legal issues around yeah. um, tolling just trucks. Uh, Rhode Island. Uh, Rhode Island uh, being mm -hmm. that. Is the, tolling, and they've yeah. got a lawsuit now by the Trucking Association saying it violates the Commerce Clause and uh, it's unfair, yeah. discriminatory, and so on. So. John, do you get a lot of flack for not voting with the Democrats all the time? Because you voted no on past budgets that were Democratic mm -hmm. budgets. Um, no, I, I think um, you know. At the end of the day, I answer to my my constituents, and you know, I'm proud to be a Democrat. But I take an oath first to to serving the Constitution and the state of Connecticut, and um, I think my my constituents appreciate that. Um, you know, they haven't moved my parking space yet, or um, <laughs> and we are the party. And of, you like uh, it that way. <laughs> we are the the big tent party, right? Democrats right, are the big tent party. Different and, views in um, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's different. It's a different time because there are at the national level and at the local level, as you know, an infusion of more progressive Democrats. So right. it, it's a different dynamic this yep. year, and different a new governor, a lot of different different uh, dynamics. But what about the Republican versus Democrat? I mean, you're either a Republican or you're a Democrat, and, and people are really hardened. They're more like, it's more like a team in both cases. I find it less so on the state side. I think there's a lot of, you know, we ultimately end up voting together 95% of the time mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the bread and butter issues. It's the bigger issues of, you know, guns and, and budgetary and, and things like that that come up that, we face um, we face uh, some hostility, not hostility, but conflict. Um, but there's good collegiality, and I've got friends on both sides of the aisle, and it's like working uh, anywhere else. You build those friendships over the years, and you have a common goal, and try and get the ball over the finish line together. Tell us what's going on with this special session scheduled for next week. So we're hearing the restaurant workers mm -hmm. bill is going to get addressed in the hospitals. Have you so, seen any of those pieces of legislation? No. We're oh. supposed to caucus on Wednesday at 1030 and go in at 11. And I also understand that there's a um, complicating things, a, um, a bonding commission meeting at the same time. So oh. I don't know if everything's going to come together. But obviously, we prefer a little more time. Um, to look at the bills, but there seems to be compromise on the uh, wage tip issue, um, even though there's some pending lawsuits. Um, and there also seems to be resolve on the hospital uh, association with the hospitals, a seven year contract, um, changing the rates, uh, ensuring uh, limited taxation over the next few years. So the bonding package uh, covers construction projects and uh, the local things that are the favorites of particular lawmakers. What's your project in Simsbury? I don't have one in there. You don't have one in there? No, I didn't. I, I was going to say good for you, but uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, uh, I don't. Um, uh, I don't believe I. People do. aren't clamoring to get something fixed. No, people are clamoring to fix our budget. I'll fix the budget. Really, and that's a Democrat Republican theme: is people really want to. Uh, be able to live comfortably here, work here comfortably, retire here. You know, I just asked one of my nephews if he's coming back to live here, and, you know, he laughed. And that's very disconcerting. Where is he? He's in New York. Or, um, and then I've got 20 nieces and nephews. One's in Boston. And so it's unattractive to young people. It's harder for, for seniors. And, of course, businesses continue to, to struggle. 
So. Simsbury seems to be doing well, though. We have the big concert hall downtown. Um, yes. It's like bustling, I feel like, right it's now. A, it's a great, it's your hometown. Yes. You're always so welcome. I, um, there is a lot there. going on. It's a great, it's a great town, especially yeah. this time of year, the holidays. And we have great uh, educational system, as you know. You're yes. a product of that am, educational system. And great well, recreation. That's where it came from. That's where yes. it came from. It produces the best and the brightest, I like there to you say. Go. Love Sims Bray. <laughs> yes. Please tell everyone I say hello. I will indeed. And uh, we always appreciate you coming on Thanks and, so and talking much. with you us. Do. Anytime. We will Anytime. see how it plays it's great out. Great to be with you. We'll keep you posted. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> All right. Thank right. you, John. Representative John Hampton from Simsbury. Yep. All right, still to come today on The Real Story Rhode Island currently uh, tolling trucks only at this point, and it's facing a lawsuit by the trucking industry for being singled out. But Governor Lamont remains confident that if Connecticut passes a similar law, it will remain on solid legal ground. Up next, we are going to ask a lawyer. Is Governor Lamont right? Quinnipiac University professor Bill Dunlap is on deck. And coming up right after The Real Story, it's Real People with Stan Simpson on his show today. We talk with a UConn student who's, who's, who is rather creating quite the buzz on campus. Wanjiku Gatheru is UConn's first ever recipient of a prestigious Rhodes Scholarship. This young woman will travel to England next year to attend Oxford University. We are going to get to know her. That's ahead on The Stan Simpson Show. But first, the real story will continue right after a quick break. <laughs> 